Greetings and welcome to Old Drunken Discography. I'm Jason, with me is Tim and Colquitt. I'm Little Topo Chico. And today we are ranking Biz Studio Albums, along with some discussion on notable releases, being those two, or an EP and a comp down there, you see. Uh, yeah, help us, give us a like, subscribe, be huge. We're trying to reach our goal of <laughs> six, 500 subscribers. Uh, so, yeah, hit that By thumbs President's up. Day. Hey, who President's else Day. on YouTube is talking about biz? Yeah, us. 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 That's it. So, we have a Discord, Patreon, Facebook group. Check those out below. Um, Yeah, so biz. Oh, wait, before we get into that. <clears throat> Mr. King, Stephen King. Oh, right, yeah. Um. I have no idea how to tie this crazy ass band <laughs> into any Stephen King novel. So, Colquitt reached out, and Sci Fi Stephen, we asked him what his favorite Stephen King story was, and it was The Shining. So, Stephen King, give us a like, give us a retweet on Twitter, because Sci Fi Stephen from Biz likes The Shining. So. Have you guys read and or seen Dr. Sleep yet? Probably I, not. I, I didn't ask, honestly. <laughs> oh, no, I'm asking, I'm asking you guys. Oh. Oh, yeah, of course. I watched it. Yeah, I don't, I don't, no, I, I mean, I, it. I, it was during COVID, so I might have turned it on and, like, did other things at the time. So. I, I thought that movie was pretty rad. Which doesn't make any sense if you watch, if you just go, if you only watch the Shining movie, because the hotel doesn't burn down in the movie, but. Whatever, we're here to talk about biz. So, yeah, yeah. relationship-wise, I'll go ahead and go first. I have no idea who the fuck biz was until Cole Quick kept talking about him. He kept saying, we got to do biz, we got to do biz, we got to do biz. We made him listen to 26 Rolling Stones records, so this is our penance. We gave him biz. <laughs> here we are. This is my, So this, this whole discography is completely new to me. Yeah, yeah. Uh, I'm, I'm assuming the same for Tim as well. Yeah. A, a, a good assumption. Yeah, never heard of them before. Um, completely new discography for me. Did, did either of you even at least hear the Powerpuff Girls theme song? That was oh, very. Yeah. I grew up on that. Yeah, they they did that. So that was how most people when I when I when people ask me, I can I'm hear like, that. Oh, oh my yeah, favorite 100%. band. <laughs> I went back. I did a lot people of. People ask me my favorite band is. I'm like, I say it's uh, this band called Biss. Uh, they're from Scotland. Um, and they're like, who is that? And I'm like, and I go, you've seen Powerpuff Girls, right? And they're like, yeah. I'm like, all right, well, they did the outro theme song. They're like, oh, whoa. Yeah, nobody knows that that's an actual band for the most part, which is unfortunate <laughs> and bums me out so bad because I love these guys so much. And I have for uh, going close to 30 years at this point, like it's wild, 25 at least. Um, for me, uh, I remember seeing the video for Tell It to the Kids on uh, 120 Minutes one night, and it's very, very much like the cover for New Transistor Heroes. It's got like this whole anime element to it, and it's fun. Um, and that was, and I was like, literally went to Warehouse Music at the mall the next day and <laughs> found it there and bought it. And for some reason, that one record store, every time they had a new release, would have one copy of it and I would go up there and buy it on opening day and it made my life <laughs> awesome like for real like it was pretty good I would frequent that store as well and you're correct yeah, they, the ones they just, I was there for, for new releases they'd have one copy <laughs> and it was just weird um, found that that record was released and we're, I guess we're talking about that record anyway so that's might as well pull it up I suppose uh, but that record um, was the first release by the Grand Royal Records by the BC Boys. So I don't know how many other records were released by them uh, on that label. Grand Royal was pretty popping for a couple of years. Yeah, it was it was a hot hot minute in nine, the mid nineties, late nineties. Yeah, I remember Luscious Jackson. Yeah, I dude, I've seen you. them live. Hey, I love Luscious Jackson. That's a great yeah rec uh, band. And then I love Ben Lee, too. Uh, I discovered Ben Lee because of Grand Royal Records. Like, that was one of those times where I was, like, hoping that record label was going to continue to show me cool shit. And I don't know what happened to it. It kind of just disappeared. It was weird. I stand with this um, row on the Ben Lee situation. So. Yeah. And you yeah, can well, check out the Beastie Boys book to find out what happened. 
Yeah, yeah, yeah. And I've read it, and I don't even remember, so that's sad. <laughs> but, I, um, if I remember correctly, they just gave up on it. Yeah, that sounds about right. Yeah. Yeah. But um, but yeah, super hip pedigree for this band. And later in life, I found out that they were already famous in the UK. Uh, they were the youngest indie band to play, or unsigned band to play on Top of the Pops, which was basically like the British version of American Bandstand. Uh, it was like the breaker of new acts. If you played on that, like you pretty much were like set on a rocket in a way. I watched so, that. And they were unsigned at the time. And the, that is, all of that is featured on the I Love This compilation, I believe. Um, I'm not 100% certain because, again, there's not a whole terrible lot of information you can find on the Internet about this band, really. Um, so, yeah, um, I love this fucking record. It's awesome. But what do you guys think before I go on my 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 parade? I guess. Tim, you want to go first? Sure. Um, you know, I really liked this record. It was, uh, it's very punk rock in a post punk kind of chaotic jazz kind of way. Like it's just, it's all over the place. Um, like the first six songs were all just bangers. <laughs> Actually, and the first then, three were all uh, singles. Actually, they're all oh, video. okay. Well, they're videos too. Yeah, they could have kept going. Um, <laughs> uh, it did kind of drag a little bit towards Fall. like the, the seventy percent mark, but then I really liked lie detector test, so that picked it all back up. Mm -hmm. Um, yeah, it's. Uh, Every time it would remind me of something, it was something that I liked. And so, like, by, by default, is like, no, I, I like this. Um, I need more time with it. Again, brand yeah. new discography. So um, my first impressions, really. But, um, yeah, it's super energetic. Um, a lot of really cool ideas. Um, I had one complaint with it and it carries throughout the discography and it's kind of in um, the song writing style where even though there's like all this chaos kind of going on it's still very sim simplistic, simplistic and repetitive hmm. like they'll take one line and then do it for like eight measures yeah no especially on the early works for sure it's definitely more um i, I mean and, and again that's my like, one like, complaint and no, no. i'm sure i'm gonna look past that the more i listen to it so yeah, well, yeah it's, it's i think it's a really good album it's so, one of those things for me where it's like uh because they're using program drums for everything like there's only so much you can do that was a question i, I like had they, a lot of them sound really good yeah yeah well, but I feel like, there's, like there is like a, a thorough line to most of the songs, which I could see could be repetitive. But then I hear all this crazy stuff and layering that's happening on the same time that I just it I my ears exactly. But there's always like one or two anchors, yeah. like uh, like there'll be like there'll be one guitar riff, and the riff is only a measure long, you know, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> and it but and like everything else can change. But that one little anchor is still there. And I get it, especially if they're using a drum machine. Um, which, yeah, I questioned it. I, I could not tell at times, which is, you know, yeah. I, yeah, I like it. Like, the production's great. Like, this was a really fun album. I, th I think that, though, is because this is a pop band. And I think you're going to have that repetitiveness in it. Sure, but pop doesn't necessarily mean repetitive, and I would almost argue that they're they're more of a punk band. Well, yeah, but I think uh, the genre coined for them is disco punk, actually. Which that checks out. That's why there's so many dancey beats. There's but a there's lot still of four on the floor, attitude. four on the floor beats. Yeah. Well, okay, um, okay. Not necessarily would, this album. Can I throw in, uh, are you guys familiar with Death From Above 1979? A little bit, yes. A little bit. No. 
I would call super. that disco punk. I don't know. I never really thought they were disco punk, so I don't know. Yeah. I don't know either. So man. it's a thing. It's a genre name that can be anything, really, because it's not really a genre, I guess. I don't even know. Yeah, yeah. yeah. No, I, I can totally see it, but... Yeah. It's a fun album. It's a really good album. Yeah, I agree that it's a little bloated, for sure. Um, my CD version that I always had had Rollerblade Zero and Team Theme as, as just the last two tracks on the record. But... For me, it like it does start to drag a little bit around uh, um, Poster Parent and Monstar and Sinitized Sense Around, like those three tracks I like and I enjoy, but they're not my faves. And I feel like if this were a 13 track record or maybe a 12 track record, maybe you know it would it would it would be it would it would benefit by the brevity, you know, like I, I think I you've got that. all major records where they're all like in the 45 minute range. But yeah. yeah, it was interesting too. Though this came out in '97, yeah, and I heard a lot of what would become yep. uh, the refused 1998 classic, "The Shape of Punk," to come. Really? Now that's that's an interesting thing to say, my friend, because I do love that record very much. But I would never draw that parallel. But well, and I, I, like I can it very much. So please elaborate. <laughs> well, if you go into the influences. Okay. Like I love the shape of punk to come as well. And they're obviously very influenced by like jazz and the stooges and James Brown. Yeah. In addition to all this hardcore. Yeah. And I point. get a lot of that from this as well, where like there's a lot of Devo on here. Yeah. But oh, there's yeah. also very a lot of like public image limited. Yep. And like there's it, it it all kind of pools from the same thing. And again, Every time this reminded me of something, it was something I liked. Yeah, so, exactly. You know, it's beautiful, I, man. <laughs> what about you, Jason? I had the same. What Tim just said was exactly the same for me. With the, we don't know each other's notes. The, 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 the influences anything, you find, you're like, but I like that. I like that. I like that. Yeah. So I went into this with the only context of hey we're gonna do this scottish pop band and you remember the powerpuff girls yeah okay well they did that song okay well, that sounds cool that was the only thing i had going in with this so i'm thinking pop right u.s when i think pop i i think your your u.s charts stuff that is not this <laughs> at all. um tell it i like the short I like the short, like, introduction, shit-talking introductions. It's very Beastie Boys. I was not expecting the level of quality with the lyrics that was delivered. Lines like, hey, you homophobe, life without your frontal lobe. Your prejudice lies while innocent die. So far, so good. Sweet Shop. Uh, I love Manda's vocals on this one. Uh, this would be Ed's favorite Biss song for sure. He loves candy. I like the song as well because I like good metaphors. <laughs> Hmm? Does that mean we're putting Bow Wow Wow on the the, uh, the list? Yeah. Yeah, Yeah, he likes candy. Uh, (laughs) Starbright Boy, I don't know their names, but the male singer on this one reminds me of Thurston Moore, so that's a win right there. The other uh, course is so good as well. Yeah, this is my notes. I listened to this way before I did any kind of digging. Uh, Pop Star, super fun song, Mr. Important. I was getting Jonathan Coltrane vibes from Mr. Important. Only 10 years before him. Uh, still digging it. And Antiseptic Poetry. The verses are very late 90s. Slitter Kinney. Decent guitar mm-hmm. work. Pop Yura, Yura. Again, some interesting guitar work. The lyrics are fantastic. I haven't heard anything I've hated yet. This is all good shit. Skinny Tie is pretty groovy. Almost reminds me of Devo. Again, the... I don't... My notes just stop right there. Again, the uh, Poster <laughs> Patient. B-52s. The Devo has begun. <laughs> There's a lot of B-52s as well. Mm. Yeah, yeah. Um, it's got a clean guitar sound. Monster, though, I actually really fucking liked Monster. It was yeah. a great topic. It was a great meaning. It had great lyrics. Like, should I be embarrassed if it's such a crime? Funny how your life depends on your waistline. Uh, everybody thinks super upbeat and fun. Rebel Soul had some great bass. Photoshop 
It was a little repetitive, but again, great lyrics, meaning in the song. Think for yourself, kids. X defect is fine. Lie detector test is not Sage Francis' lie detector test, but it's a top song contender for me. I called it here, Tim. Fuck you. <laughs> uh, great uh, lyrics. I like okay, the... I'll give you that one. Yeah. Uh, voc- I like the vocal trade Didn't even make the list. <laughs> it didn't make the list? Oh, well, it should have. Oh. Uh, nope. Found some better ones. Yeah, man. And Di- Dinosaur Germs, a straight screw you boomer song from 1997. I didn't know what to expect going in, but was pleasantly surprised by this record. It was fun. The lyrics were really good. It had this youthful energy, almost like early Beck. Uh, there were two extra tracks on the Spotify release. I enjoyed both of them. Rollerblade Zero was fun. Some interesting percussion. And Team Theme is one of those self-referential shit-talking songs I love. I just, <laughs> I, I like this album. Like, that was a damn good album. Hell yeah, dude. Yeah. Um, uh, I think Rollerblade Zero is the funniest song on the record. Uh, just because as a skateboarder around 1996, uh, I, I felt the same about rollerblades. I thought that was really funny. Um, <laughs> I, the, is hate really negative? Is love really positive of antiseptic poetry? It's just so good. Uh-huh. Like there's like, there's so many great damn moments on this album. And honestly, the only reason why I said that stuff about it being slow in the middle is because I was having to be critical because I'm the guy who brought it to the party, you know? That's true. Yep. I honestly love every one of those songs very much. <laughs> But yeah, no, I think it's an awesome record, and I am super stoked to hear you guys have a positive reception to it. Honestly, it's gonna have yeah. you're gonna have the hardest time rankings. I already know that. Yeah, I mean, I do know I've got two that I would put lower than others, but that's it. So They're all green for me, at least. <laughs> I can tell you that. Oh, I didn't even think about my colors. Yeah, man. I have to think about that. So because this is the first record we're talking about, it automatically defaults to number one. Give us a like, subscribe. Will it remain? Will it remain? Will it remain? Uh, Yeah. Stick around for that. Like, subscribe. If you haven't checked out Biz yet, go check them out. I highly recommend it, especially this album. That's the only one I can talk about right now. Spoilers, but go, go listen to this album. It's on Spotify. Um, and um, I think I think there was an interview with Stephen came out a few months ago, where this album came up in the conversation with I think it was James McDonald from Enemy, um, his podcast. But uh, they said that uh, he he was thinking because they talked about this record because J- James also thinks it's a it's a kind of a weird record because it's just it's just it's everything weird, all at once. You know what yeah, I mean? It's weird. And um, so Stephen mentioned something about maybe doing a a, a re-release of it and some new format or at the very least putting it out on vinyl uh so that'll be exciting for me because i don't have it on vinyl and in fact i don't have it on cd anymore either i lost it in a long 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 time ago but uh, i do have this um it's the the uh the anthology it was a limited release in 2014 and it's got a lot of the stuff from uh every era of the band so i wish it was more widely available so you could just be like hey Check this out. If you like this, you will like all the records probably. But um, yeah. If they re- band, if they this repress record. this on vinyl, I would one hundred percent buy it. Yeah, I would, I, I would get this one on vinyl. Buy well, this on vinyl. In fact, this yeah. band is my first vinyl. The first vinyl I ever bought was by this band. So. We'll and and, and where is it? It's you on. You got to show it off. Huh? You the we'll show it off when we get to that record. We'll show it off when we get to that record. Oh, oh perfect. Okay, gotcha. Like Oh, this yeah. is gotcha. groundbreaking. This okay. is the first time Colquitt gets to show off his records. I mean, yeah. always yeah. like, oh, check I mean I've out. got a lot of this stuff on CD, but I've just got two on vinyl at the moment. But not nice. really happy with those. I don't have any biz. Very cool. Yet. Repress this out. Do you have a biz. table yet? No, no. Um, my fiance does. She she used to be a, a, a wannabe DJ kind of person. So she's got all this equipment. But uh, yeah. Yeah, I will eventually have a version playthrough of it. It'll be fun. It'll be great on a good turn. Excellent. Too. I'm excited for you. Yeah. Oh, shit. Look, I'm even wearing a shining shirt. See that? <laughs> Stephen King. All right, Stephen Sci-fi King. Sci-fi Stephen. Let's work this ODD magic, friends. Let's get a let's get a group chat going here. You both will we'll interview both Stevens at the same time. 
Steven on Steven. Steven on Steven. Let's go. Even Stevens, man. <laughs> uh, I, I don't have anything interesting to end at. I think that's the end right there. Yep. That was, that's that a good one right there. We'll close it right there. Uh, <laughs> stick around, like, subscribe. We'll be talking about social dancing. So, yep. Be safe. Make good decisions. <laughs>